Hey guys, Zot here, and with the release of 8.1.5, we've seen the release of two new races, the Zandalari Trolls and the Coal Tyrans. In this video, we're going to be covering their racials and discussing if they're going to be worth race changing for PvP or not. Okay, so let's begin with the Zandalari Trolls. They can be most races apart from Warlock, Death Knight, and of course Demon Hunters. To unlock them, you're going to have to complete the Zandalari Empire achievement, which is to have exalted with the Zandalari Trolls, as well as finishing the war campaign and all of the main quests. So the racials, let's take a look, as Zandalari Trolls are quite unique, as they can decide between six different lower, all giving them unique racials. First is the Embrace of Akunda. This just gives you a little extra healing on your abilities, however, works out to be a very low percent of your overall healing, currently not worth taking on any healers. Bwamsamdi and Gonk are both also extremely weak, with Bwamsamdi just being a weaker touch of the grave, Gonk is also just some passive movement speed. Although it doesn't look that bad, this is your main ratio, and with all lovers equated to about a 1% damage increase, a little extra movement speed is on the weaker side of ratios, purely from a numbers standpoint. Next we have the Embrace of Kimball. This is a damage over time effect that basically equates to about 1% damage increase, however we wouldn't recommend it for PvP. Random dots on targets that are worth so little are not really ideal, you could potentially break crowd control. However, if you're not worried about that, this would be the best ratio for both melees that don't value crit. Last up is Embrace of Paku. This is the main reason people are going Zandalari. It's basically just a 1% crit ratio on average, same as Goblin's 1% haste for instance. All ratios basically equate to that same amount of damage, around the 1% mark. Now, the one Embrace I didn't mention is the tank one, Kragwa. This again is just never worth taking. So to summarise, you either want Paku or Kimball, depending on your composition and class. If crit's decent for you or you play a healer, stick to Paku. If you're not too worried about a dot on the target, then Kimball is also fine. Alright, so the other ratios. Well, the first is a slow fall. As this is a 15 minute cooldown, you can't use it in either arena or rated battlegrounds. However, it can be somewhat useful in world PvP or random battlegrounds. And also is the other main reason this race is going to see some play, and that's regenerating. Now, this is completely broken for classes that can get the full channel off, as it's basically just 100% heal over 6 seconds. This is, however, interrupted by damage and damage over time effects. Okay, so now we've seen all the racials, should you go Zandalari? Well, purely if you want that tiny edge, then the majority of classes, it's sadly a no. Why? Well, because all of the classes apart from both Paladins, Priest and Druid can be Orc. Now, Orc is always going to be stronger, simply because of the stun reduction as well as Blood Fury, having two very useful racial abilities. Zandalari Troll will sadly not be able to compete with those. The three classes that can't be Orc, however, Druid, Priest and Paladin, Druid have a much better option in either Troll or Tauren, with Troll being a better damage increase due to lining up with Incarnation, and Torrent allowing you to gain a War Stomp clone. Alright, so the two I didn't mention, Priests and Paladins. Both of these classes cannot be Orc, and due to this, Zandalari is going to be their preferred race. This is not only due to them not being able to be Orc, but both of them can abuse the regenerating ratio, with Paladins able to channel the full ratio and heal themselves to full whilst inside Bubble, as they're immune to all damage, and Shadow Priests are able to get some use out of it, when using the Honor Talent Greater Fade against certain compositions. However, Shadow Priests also greatly benefit from the Critical Strike, as do Paladins. So, to summarise, if you're a Paladin, Shadow Priest or even a Holy Priest, then go Zandalari. If you're a Dis Priest, consider staying either Undead or Goblin, and for Druids, just stay Troll or Tauren. For every other class, Orc is just vastly superior in all aspects of PvP. Okay, so moving on, we've got the new alliance race, the Coal Tyrans. Again, it's the same classes that can be one, with the exception of Paladin, Warlock, Demon Hunter and Death Knight. To unlock them, it's the same as Zandalari. You need Exalted with the race's home faction, which is Proudmoor Admirality. And then you're going to need the major storylines complete, as well as the rest of the war campaign and Jaina questlines. Alright, so let's take a look at the racials. The only relevant ones here are the Haymaker, Brush It Off, and possibly the Rhine of the Ancient Marina. First up is the Haymaker. This is Cole Turan's main on use ratio, and boy is it fun to play with. What this is, is basically a 3 second stun with the added bonus of knocking the enemy back. 
The range of the knockback is similar to the rest of the knocks in the game, so think Thunderstorm, Explosive Trap, Shining Force. So you can knock enemies quite far back. This ability is however on stun diminishing returns, but not on knockback diminishing returns. So you can combine it with things like Shaman knockback, Priest knockback or even a Hunter knockback for some ridiculous knocks. You can also cast this while moving around, as long as you was in range when you started the cast. The next ratio is Brush It Off. This is not great, it's just a 1% buff to versatility and it also gives you some small healing over time, when taking damage, nothing to write home about, but not terrible by any means. So back to the main reason of this video, should you go cult around for arena? Well, currently in the meta of Dark Iron Dwarfs and Night Elves to counter Gladiator's Maledict, sadly Colterin is not going to see any playing competitive, but it's a fun race, looks good and the racials are not bad. In fact, on certain maps they're actually strong. The ability to knock enemies on a Z-axis map is incredibly fun. Also, so is having a stun and a knockback on classes that don't have access to one. But if we see Gladiator's Maledict falling out of the meta or being removed, then Cold Tyran will be a very competitive race, probably among the best, competing with human, however given a little extra utility. However, currently with all classes having access to either Night Elf, Dwarf or Dark Iron Dwarf, I would stick to those. Alright, so to summarise, the two new races are not going to change much in the meta, except from Shadow Priest and all Paladin specs, but in the grand scheme of things, if you're not trying to compete at the highest level, all racials equate to less than a 1% difference. So if you're not looking to compete, just stick with whatever race you enjoy, or like the look of. But for those looking to gain that edge, stay Orc for Horde and Night Elf, Dark Iron or Dwarf for Alliance. Okay guys, thanks for watching this quick video on the two new races added in 8.1.5. Be sure to plus skill if you found this helpful and I'll see you in the next video.